You know what one of the most useful things I like having in a truck is? Onboard air! And whether it's to inflate your tires, somebody else's tires, inflate an air mattress, maybe you've got onboard air lockers. I always find an air compressor handy. This is one I just installed kind of hidden in the bed of the Toyota Tacoma because there's actually quite a bit of room between the actual bed itself and the bedside, enough to fit a single ARB air compressor like this one, or there's actually even enough room back there to fit a twin ARB air compressor. Now, while this was kind of a big project for me and a lot of custom work, this was possible because of a mount that is designed by Expedition Essentials that I picked up from the one and only Tacoma Beast Com. You know, I've shown quite a few Expedition Essentials products here on my channel that I've ordered through Tacoma Beast, and I've got to say, the quality is just unmatched. And they definitely did not let down with this bedside compressor. But anyways, in this video, I just wanted to go into detail about this ARB air compressor setup in this Tacoma's bedside. I filmed myself installing this whole thing, including the complete wiring and mounting in case you guys wanted to follow along, or just see what installing something like this at home DIY in your garage involves and trust me it was totally worth it but it was a lot of work. I have another video where I wired up an ARB air compressor here on my channel except for that one I actually mounted it underneath my driver's seat. So if you clicked on this video looking at air compressor setup saying you want to see different options for your Toyota Tacoma you can check out that one as well I'll have it linked down in the description but today's video is going to be all about about this air compressor setup in a Tacoma bedside. So before I talk more about the compressor stuff in this video, I just have to stop here for a moment to say a huge, 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 huge thank you to you guys. This channel recently hit 100,000 subscribers. It's absolutely insane to me. And ever since it like hit me that 100,000 people have hit that red subscribe button below my videos, I honestly just, I don't, I still don't understand why. I feel like I just have this maybe unhealthy obsession with the Toyota Tacoma. And I'm so glad that so many of you guys share that with me too. But yeah, it's a little unbelievable to me still. There's like a couple people at my work who also have third gen Tacomas. And sometimes during our lunch breaks or after work, or when we see each other walking in, we stop and we show each other our latest Tacoma mods. And it's just like really fun geeking out about that. And I kind of feel like my YouTube channel is a digital format of that. I mean, it really just is me in my garage showing you guys what I've done to my Toyota Tacoma, me on the trails with my truck, showing you guys the adventure and trying to kind of bring you guys along. You know, I know my videos aren't perfect. I've made plenty of mistakes here on my channel before. I'm not an off-road racer. I'm not a mechanic. I don't work for Toyota, although that would be really, really cool. I'm honestly just your average Toyota Tacoma owner, like most of you who watch my videos, who just has fun doing this sort of stuff in her free time. So it means a lot to be part of this community and thank you so much for watching and supporting my videos. Now with all that being said, I do wanna say that my friends at Haviland reached out to me when I hit 100,000 subscribers and offered to do a giveaway. And I wanted to spend this portion of the video to explain that if you're interested because it's actually a really, really great prize. They are giving away four boxes of Haviland Pro RS, which if you have the V6 Tacoma, that's basically like enough oil for four oil changes, considering the engine takes about six quarts of oil and each box is six quarts. And also six bottles of Tecron Complete Fuel System Cleaner or six bottles of Tecron High Mileage Fuel System Cleaner, plus a bunch of other goodies. So the way to enter this 100K giveaway is pretty simple. All you have to do is leave a comment on this video with with your Instagram handle. And the reason we're doing Instagram handles is because there's been a lot of spam here on my YouTube comments 
And I know not all of you out there have Instagram, but Instagram really is the only way I can direct message the winner. To enter, you also have to follow my Instagram at Chloe Kuo Taco, Havlin's Instagram, Havlin USA, and Tecron's Instagram, Chevron Tecron. In your comment with your Instagram handle, I would also just love to know which out of all my videos I've ever made on my channel is your personal favorite. Maybe I'll get some future video ideas that way. At the end of this month, we will take all the comments with valid entries and we will randomly select one of them for a winner takes all of this amazing prize. And yeah, I hope you guys are excited for this giveaway. It's been a minute since I've done a giveaway. You guys definitely deserve it. And again, thank you so, so much for this big milestone. Okay, now let's get back on topic to today's video, the air compressor. So using this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just give you guys a quick demonstration. So you just take your air hose and plug it in. I've got the activation switch mounted over here so you don't have to run into the cab to turn the air compressor on. Just seemed to make more sense to put it over here. Flip the switch. And I've got a pressure switch in here, which is why it automatically shuts off. But you can see the second I release air, it fires back up until pressure builds up again, of course. So we'll turn it off. Release the air. Take out your air hose. I'm going to be probably repeating this a lot in my video, but this whole thing is kind of a custom setup. Like I had to free form cut this giant hole in this bedside. Of course, you can cut it smaller, but I cut a big hole because I also wanted this box to act as a storage option since this Tacoma didn't have one on this side of the bed before. There is a smaller storage box and the inverter on the passenger side, but there was nothing on the driver's side before. These two plates right here are basically how the mount attaches to the bed itself. So I had to drill six holes for that in addition to cutting out this opening and then of course I cut a little section out for the switch and you could see more details in the installation portion of this video but the ARB air compressor basically mounts with four bolts to the back of the Expedition Essentials mount and then I basically routed all my wiring alongside the frame. So again everything minus some of the custom wiring stuff I did I picked up from Tacoma Beast. I'll have a link in the description to those exact products in case you want to pick them up and replicate this setup. So yeah, let's talk more about this setup, how practical it is, what the pros and cons are, and how difficult of a DIY this was. If any of you out there have a 2016 to maybe 2018 Toyota Tacoma, on your driver's side, you may already have a cubby cutout over here. This 2020 Tacoma did not have that. In fact, there was nothing here before. And as I've been saying, I had to cut this out myself. But if you already have that larger cubby on the driver's side of your truck bed, that's actually what this Expedition Essentials mount is intended to replace. I did find a good YouTube video about someone who installed this exact kit that had one of the older third gens that already had this cubby and used the kit as intended. It was Max Powell, and I'll have a link in the description to his video because again, his install was kind of what the product was intended for. If you've got a Tacoma with Without that cubby, you've got to do some modification yourself like I did over here. Speaking of cutting, in the experience I had cutting through this fiberglass, it was not very easy. It was not only messy and fumey, but depending on what tool you use, it can take time. I know I'm not the fastest worker out there, but it took me like an hour to cut this giant hole out just because I wanted to do my best to straighten the edges. And you guys can probably see that it is definitely not 100% perfect. I did put electrical tape over the raw edges because obviously fiberglass is super, super sharp. And also it just looks super unfinished without some sort of surround, which is what this electrical tape kind of acts as. But just straightening out some of these edges was a little bit difficult given what tools I had, but I did my absolute best. I'm still really happy with it. Although I do plan to fabricate some sort of cover. And I'm thinking because these plates that came in the Expedition Essentials kit 
are made of steel, AKA they are magnetic. Maybe I can make some sort of magnetic cover that attaches to these steel plates. I think that would be pretty cool, especially if it had like a little hole cut out over here. Let me know what you guys think about that. So yeah, cutting this rectangle out took time, but what also took a lot of time was cutting this little hole for this switch. I was just really afraid of cutting too big of a hole and then the switch falling through and it's always better to cut less and just iteratively try rather than cut too much and have to deal with filling in a large hole. So yeah, this thing took time, but it fits in really, really securely. It's super snug, it's not going anywhere. But I would say for sure, this was harder to cut than this. Looking at it like this, you might be saying, wow, Chloe, those are a lot of MPT fittings. Why couldn't you just put this main piece that the hose connects to directly into the manifold? Well, yes, I realize there are a lot of fittings on here. I didn't directly connect this hose fitting into the compressor because I wanted to add the pressure switch I talked about earlier. The pressure switch right here basically just shuts the compressor off when it hits a certain pressure, which I think is up to 100 PS just based on this label. I honestly suggest having one of these pressure switches in your setup, depending of course on what you're using your air compressor for. In my own experience, this single air compressor doesn't generate like a lot of heat, but the kit comes with a pressure switch, so why not install it? The compressor won't heat up as much and it'll turn off when you don't need to use it. I think I mentioned earlier that you can fit a twin ARB air compressor in here. And I actually just posted a picture of my setup because I just finished installing it on my Instagram stories. And I got a couple of replies from you guys about why I did not install the twin and why I just installed the single. The short answer is just that I didn't need the twin. I find the single to be more than enough for me. You know, the single is cheaper and more space efficient. And if you have giant tires and you're finding yourself needing to air up all the time, by all means, a twin would be useful. But in my experience, I have used the single ARB compressor to air up my 265 70R17 size tires and I can air them up 10 to 15 psi in less than a minute which I find to be more than adequate. You know I used to use one of those handheld battery power ones and after an off-road trip in Big Bear where it was just so cold and I was outside my truck for like 20 minutes trying to air back up my frozen hands and I decided yeah it was time to get an air b air compressor but anyways my whole point is if you wanted to replicate my exact setup but instead of the single use the twin arb you totally could okay so now on to some of the pros and cons for this setup and I will say I can't right now give it a long-term review because I just installed it. But having talked to other people who install this exact same Expedition Essentials box in their bedside for air compressor use, I do have some stuff I can talk about based on their experience as well. So first, super easy access back here on the driver's side. You can just reach over, plug your hose in, it essentially utilizes dead space unless you had the bed cubby and we're using that for something else already. And because it's mounted here in the bed or the back of the truck, when you fire it on and have it running and you've got passengers inside your truck, it won't be too loud for them. Now, again, I do have that air compressor underneath my driver's seat in my TRD off-road. It is loud, people could hear it for sure, but it's not gonna hurt anybody's hearing. But of course, if you mount it back here in the bed, really, you're not gonna have that sound issue come up whatsoever. But now onto some cons. I predict, and based off of talking to other people, that this thing will collect quite a bit of dust. So I am hoping to make that cover I was talking about soon, but luckily the good thing is this truck has a tonneau cover. So that'll help the dust issue coming from the inside a little bit. But the box is obviously mounted in front of the wheel well, AKA 
right behind the tire and that's going to kick up dust. I mean, it is shielded because it's got that bottom plate, but of course it's just not dust proof. There is another thing specific to my setup. So basically there is a 40 amp inline fuse that I mounted to the back of this box. That is the inline fuse that came supplied with the wiring harness. Now, because I mounted the switch closer to the bedside, the wiring harness that came with the ARB kit all had to kind of be localized over here. So when I basically extended out my power wire, I added another inline fuse close to the battery because obviously that's much safer. But anyways, the existing 40 amp fuse is mounted to the back of this box. And if for some reason it ever blows, it could be a little tricky to change. I mean, I'd have to just crawl underneath there and reach my hand on the back and more so feel for it than be able to see what I'm doing. Same thing goes for the relay, but probably the biggest negative thing I can think about this setup was the install, which thankfully for me, I don't have to worry about because I got past that and the compressor setup works. But the install, at least for me, was not a walk in the park. I will say I did have a ton of fun because I just like doing DIY in general, but if I were to put all my hours I spent on this project together, I think I spent about seven hours now keep in mind, when I do these DIY projects, my time estimate probably isn't that accurate because I'm also filming a video and it takes time to set up the camera and I can't really figure out how much of that time is the install and how much of it is just filming. But you know, in general, this project for me was a little bit difficult because I am not the best at mounting and I really wanted to try my best to make sure everything looked as clean as possible, which is why I spent so much time cutting. I wanted everything to look straight. I knew I wasn't going to get like a perfect OEM factory finish, but I wanted to just do my best and that obviously takes time. And then of course there was the wiring that took a lot of time. Now there are harnesses that you can buy to make this more plug and play friendly, but for me, I just found it easier to use what I already had at home and take this project as an opportunity for practicing some of my wiring and electrical skills too. You know, it is easy to do a sloppier job and just get this thing to work if that's your intent, but you you do want to be really careful with the wiring, especially because you're running it all the way alongside the truck, adding conduit, finding good places to zip tie the long wire to as you're running it underneath the truck, fusing it properly. All of course takes time and honestly longer than I anticipated, but that's the truth. It did take like seven hours or so. Anyways, again, I did film every step of the process and I want to show you that in detail now. So here is the install. Everything I use for this project will be linked in the description. The air compressor and bedside mount can all be ordered on Tacoma Beast, but you'll see I also use miscellaneous fittings, butt connectors, heat shrink, wires, conduit, add a circuits, etc. because I wanted to DIY my way through this. You can alternatively order an ARB pump up kit and already assembled wiring harness if you want to make this a little bit easier though. Okay, so let's get started. By the way, check out this new tool bag and tools I got from Boxo and Decked. They recently had a collaboration where they made this awesome set with 80 tools and the whole bag fits in one of my deck drawers. This was my first time using Boxo tools, but they're really nice. Like this ratchet had a lot more teeth than my Harbor Freight one you guys normally see me use. So breaking in this new set of tools on this project felt awesome. So now I'm just moving the manifold on the compressor by loosening these set screws with a four millimeter Allen wrench. Then I remove the mount that comes attached to the compressor using the 4mm wrench again. And in the ARB kit, there are bolts, nuts, and washers you can use to mount the compressor mount to the Expedition Essentials box. Then just attach the compressor back onto the mount. Now it's time for some wiring. 
So there's basically two wiring harnesses that come in the kit. One really long one, and I'm gonna call this one the main wiring harness for sake of ease. I'm not sure what ARB calls this one, and I'm gonna call this shorter one the switch wiring harness. Now, maybe not for your application, but if you're following exactly what I'm doing in this video, we are not going to need every single wire coming out of these wiring harnesses. So I wanna take a moment to show you guys which wires those are, as well as identify what each connector is because it'll help out when you're wiring this up yourself. So on this long main harness, the two wires we don't need are these two right here. So the green and black and yellow and black. These are for two switches that I will not be wiring up for this install. Everything else on this harness though is going to be used. So ignoring these two wire bundles, this is going to be the 12 volts that goes straight into the compressor and it's going to plug right in. These two wires are for your pressure switch, which comes in the ARB kit. Moving down the harness now, this of course is where our relay is going to go. Then way on the other end, this end of the harness is going to be connected to the other smaller switch wiring harness. We've got our 40 amp inline fuse here. And then of course, on the other end of the main wiring harness, this is what we're going to hook up to our battery. Now this smaller switch wiring harness is a little bit easier because things are labeled. So the two wiring bundles we aren't gonna use are labeled switch one and switch two. So I'm not going to be using these in my install at all. However, I will be using this end, which connects to the main wiring harness. This bundle, which is labeled isolating switch, is going to connect to our physical switch. And then these two wires, which are blue and white, as well as red and yellow, are going to connect directly into our fuse box. Now, knowing which parts of the wiring harness we're actually going to use, I can kind of figure out how I want my wiring to all mount and plug into this side of this whole compressor project. Obviously, I'm going to need to extend these because we're running them along the entire side of the truck. But I just wanna get everything fitted in this mount first so that we can get everything mounted and then at the end, we'll extend and finalize everything. So you can see that there's a little bit of room over here to run your wires with this Expedition Essentials mount. So I'm thinking at this junction right here in the main wiring harness is just about where I'm going to run the wiring harness out of this box because we need this connector since it's gonna connect directly into the air compressor. And again, these two wires are for our pressure switch, which is going to be mounted over here. So we need these two wires inside the box. Everything else on the main wiring harness, like the inline fuse, the relay, and the two other ends, one of which goes directly to the battery and is gonna run alongside the truck. And the other end, which is going to connect to the switch wiring harness, can all live outside of the box. Now I'm just gonna start zip tying to organize my wiring, and this might not be how the final product or the final wiring turns out, but hopefully it'll just help for organization. Since some of these holes are unused, we can probably mount our inline fuse here. Now we're gonna connect the long wiring harness to the short one. So you kind of have to put the terminated wires from the switch harness into the provided white connector and then match the colors up. So that's what I'm doing here. After that, I'm just organizing the wires by wrapping up the harness as neatly as I can and zip tying it to the back of the box. You can put them somewhere else, but this just worked for me and I was able to utilize the pre-drilled holes to hold my zip ties. So this is what it looks like with the wires consolidated. Honestly, doing this just makes everything more organized and less confusing, so I think it's worth spending time to clean up.
I knew I was going to need to extend my wires so that they could reach the engine bay, so here I'm just starting out with the two wires that'll end up getting run to the fuse box, and I'm just soldering and using heat shrink because I ran out of 14 gauge butt connectors which would be faster, but I didn't have them. So with these two wires which are for the switch, the blue white one is actually one I didn't end up using because I think it's just for illumination according to the ARB manual, but the red yellow one on the switch needs to go to the fuse box but more on that when we get to that step in the video. Now it's on to the scary part for me, cutting into the bed. So I'm using this provided template which comes with the Expedition Essentials Kit and kind of freeform deciding where I want the mount to sit since I'm not going off of an existing cubby for reference. Then I used a center punch to mark my holes for where the front plates mount to the box, marked those with a silver sharpie, drilled pilot holes, and then drilled out quarter inch holes. Now it's time for the stressful part, cutting the big hole. So you can make this as big or small as you want, but obviously you want it big enough so you can access the opening to plug your air hose in whenever you need to. I just freeformed this too and started with the rough size I wanted and later ended up trimming more. And as obvious as the sound, when you're cutting, make sure you're using proper safety equipment. This is a composite bed with fiberglass which gets everywhere and you definitely don't want to breathe that stuff in, so I recommend working in a ventilated area and wearing safety glasses. I used a combination of my circular saw to make the initial cuts on each side, then my reciprocating saw to get cleaner edges once the slits were made. Now obviously this is far from perfect and you'll see I ended up going around a second time but this first cut is just to get the box initially mounted and to see where everything kind of sits. Now here's where you'll need someone else. Use their extra pair of hands to lift the box and compressor up into place from underneath the bedside, and then use the provided two vertical front plates and bolts from the Expeditions Essentials Kit to initially mount the box using your pre-drilled holes. I used a 4mm Allen wrench for the provided bolts, and they should thread into the box when you have everything lined up. And by the way, I really like the way these plates were designed because the bolts sit flush. Nice touch by Expedition Essentials. When you can see how everything sits, that's when you want to make your fine tune adjustments. So here I am cutting some extra on one side. I'm just trying to even things out relative to where the mounting plates are. And I'm also just generally trying to straighten out some of my edges. And then once you're done with that, of course, remount the box and compressor. Once I was happy with my cutting, I cleaned up then taped off the edges with electrical tape. I'm sure you guys out there are better fabricators than me and could probably come up with something cleaner, but I did think the electrical tape didn't look half bad at all. And that's all there is for how I mounted the box. Now onto the wiring again, I already extended out the switch wires but not the power and ground 10 gauge ones so I'm stripping them back and connecting the wires using these watertight butt connectors. And I used conduit to protect these wires that are going to run alongside the frame. I think it's super important to do this because you want to protect them from anything abrasive because otherwise you can cause a short. And I can't remember what size conduit I use, but I wish I sized up because it was tight fitting all these wires in, but I did make it work.
Then I basically just took zip ties and ran the wire alongside my frame following other factory wires. This was tricky on the driver's side because obviously the gas tank is on this side, but again, following the factory wires helps out a lot. When you hit the front wheel well, you can remove this cover with a plastic pin removal tool or flat head, and then you can pull your wires through and zip tie them. Now you should be able to fish out the end through your engine bay. So taking my extended red yellow switch wire, I connected the end to an ATA circuit, and then I tapped into the 10 amp EFI number one fuse. You would also tap into, I think, a taillight fuse or something like that for the blue wired if desired, but again, I didn't do that. Now, I mentioned earlier that even though there was an inline fuse on the ARB harness, I wanted to fuse close to the battery too, so I added another 40 amp inline fuse and just used another butt connector for that. I added on some eyelets to the ground and power 10 gauge wires and hooked the red up to my 12 volt battery and black up to my chassis ground. And I did my best here to clean everything up so that I wouldn't have to revisit it later and I think the engine bay wiring overall looks pretty organized for the most part. Now back to the bed, I'm adding the switch that comes with the ARB kit. Do your best to draw out where you want it and then I drill out some holes so that my reciprocating saw could cut through. This took so, so long because I was so afraid of making the hole too big, so I just kept trimming the edges for what felt like forever, but it paid off because in the end, I made the hole the perfect size and the switch ended up fitting perfectly. And I also used some more electrical tape here to clean the edges. And then using the ARB wiring instructions, I plugged the colored switch wires into the corresponding spots of the switch and then inserted my switch in the hole I cut. We're almost there onto the last step, which is to add the provided filter onto the side of the air compressor, which for me is now the top. Then I'm taking the fittings and some Teflon tape to add my pressure switch and the hose fitting. These fittings are a random assortment I got from Home Depot. I will try to find links to the exact parts, but basically you just want to be able to thread your switch and hose fitting while at the same time clearing everything. So you'll need some sort of three-way fitting. Make sure to plug the blue and red wires into your pressure switch and the polarity doesn't matter here. To make sure all of my wiring was correct, I took my multimeter and measured the voltage across the terminals out of my ARB harness when I flipped the switch and once I saw a good voltage, I knew that the wiring was good so I plugged my compressor into the harness, flipped the switch again, and everything fired up. I was so, so happy to hear that sound, and after this install, I needed the rest of the day to relax. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this video helped if you wanted to install something like this. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you're interested, but anyways, I hope I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!